Hello everyone, this video will talk you through China's South North Water Transfer Project. So this example then is just a large scale water transfer scheme that shows us that yes, this development has both advantages and disadvantages. Sometimes you might hear the scheme referred to as the SNWTP. Okay, that's just a shortened version of the title and it's much quicker to say. Okay. In the exam, I would suggest you write the full title once and then abbreviate it thereafter to save yourself a bit of time. So if we think about what the exam board wants you to know, they want you to know three key components. So they want you to know, well, what is this scheme? They want you to know a bit about the advantages, let's add those here. And it also wants you to know about the disadvantages as well. Okay, so positives and negatives if we'd like. So if we start up here then with this whole what is the project, because you can't possibly explain the advantages and disadvantages without knowing what it involves first. So the whole point of this project then is to transfer all of the water, or some of the water rather, from the south to the north of the country. Okay, Hence it's called the South North Water Transfer Project. So the big thing this aims to do, and let's get the facts down, is transfer 44.8 billion cubic litres okay, of water then from the south to the north. So the whole point of doing this is saying, well, in the north, perhaps, um, water security there isn't great, and therefore we need to increase the sustainable supply. And in the south, we've got lots of water, we've got surplus, so therefore we can afford to support the north and transfer and move some of that water there. The big thing with this one here is the amount of money it's going to cost. And it's not a cheap project. So this project in itself costs $62 billion okay, to do. The project really is sort of threefold. It has three main parts to it. And these are the routes that the water takes. So these bits here you would need to know. So this has three main routes. So route one is the central route. Route two is the eastern route. And route three is the western route and in terms of success so far they've built and are using the central route they've built and are using the eastern route the only thing they've sort of got left to do is think about this western route and we'll talk about that towards the end because there are some sort of concerns with that one currently then the big thing we're thinking about here is sort of what sort of benefit what's the point okay and we would say here well 200 million, which is quite a lot of people, um, stand to benefit them from this. Okay, so these 200 million people in the north would get better access to water. And the reason why this happened is well, their groundwater supplies are running really low, so sometimes they have to drill about a kilometre in so you have to get it. So this project instead is going to pump that water from the south to the north and give them easier access. So, with this, then, if we consider the advantages, I might sort of break this down and say, well, for me, there are three main advantages, three main positives to this scheme. The first thing I would say in terms of advantages is it's going to provide us with a reliable supply. OK, and when I say a reliable supply, it's a supply then in theory that is there all year round. And for the north means they're going to have access to water. So places like Beijing, for example, are likely to benefit from that. The second big advantage I would say is our water helps industry to develop. Okay, when we say well developing industry, well why is that good? Well that increases wealth. Okay, increased wealth is basically saying well we've got more money, and if you've got more money, again you can invest that in further development. And last but not least, then we can say well another big positive is it's used to irrigate. Okay, and if you irrigate, it means you're just watering crops. Well, if you're watering crops, it allows sort of farming to develop, first of all, just it. So we're employing more people there. But also we can sustain the population. We can afford to feed them. We've got the crops. We've got the resources to do that. So if we compare these three advantages then over here to potential disadvantages of the scheme, we might say, well, actually, I think there are maybe a few more disadvantages than there are advantages. The first big thing I would say is, well, in order to build these, you have to do a lot of flooding, okay? So I might say, well, flooding of large areas, first of all, is quite a big disadvantage, okay? Well, why is that a disadvantage? 
that's going to destroy natural habitats. It's going to potentially impact on ecosystems as well. Because the other big thing that sort of threatens our ecosystems here is also the construction work. So the actual building of it, that impacts sort of the fragile ecosystems that are found along the paths of these routes as well. Next sort of big thing we'd say as well, the cost of the water. Okay, so cost to consumers, let's put this in here, is high. Okay, so those people living in areas like Beijing, they've now got to pay for this water. It's not exactly cheap for them. To sort of build off that a little bit, one big critique of this is it only really helps urban areas. Okay, so let's add this in. So the water is being pumped into these big urban areas, these big cities like Beijing, and it's not really helping those that are in the countryside. If we think about those people living in urban areas, typically wealthier, so likely to be able to afford this, whereas in the rural areas, they've still got no access to water and they probably wouldn't be able to afford this new supply anyway. Potentially, one thing we could see as a result of this is now seeing water stress increase in the south. Okay, well, why is this likely to happen? Well, we might say, well, because we're taking all of that water from the south and pumping it towards the north, we're now threatening the supply to the south itself. Okay, we might say, well, maybe in times of drought, those 30 million people living in the south may well not have enough drinking water or might not be able to water their own crops. And the big thing I said we'd come back to at the start was this western route. Okay. Now, the Western route currently, they've stopped, okay? Now, they've done this for quite an important reason. The path that the Western route would have to take goes right the way through an earthquake zone. So to build dams and canals there is just too risky. If we had an earthquake, it would damage this, it would cause large amounts of flooding and be extremely costly. So they've decided now not to pursue that route and just to stick with the central and eastern transfer routes. So if we go back and look at the bigger picture here, we've looked at exactly well, what this project involves. We've talked about advantages and we've talked about disadvantages. And this is exactly what you would have to do in section C of paper two. So I hope you found this video helpful. And if you need to, go and ask your geography teacher any questions you have.